There's a womp rat sniffing around the studio here. Somewhere. Do you think they sniff like that? I think the womp rats, they're more like... <laughs> so, uh, it's the cold open, Mark Fernandez. You're not Mark Fernandez. You know, I'm not a big fan of The Last Jedi. Because <laughs> I don't like it. You're Christian Harloff. Yeah, yeah. You're Darth Harloff. What's the other... Harloff Minor. Yeah. What's your good name? What's your force, like, you know... If the, I was the light side never, of the never force. been on the light side, so I wouldn't be able to tell you that. Why is that? Why is that? I don't like the Why light. Why don't you like the light side? You, you it's BS. gravitate towards it's just, the dark side. Because it's not real. <laughs> people, you know what I saw a tweet. People don't play in the light. The people playing the light side is a facade. I saw a tweet the other day. They said, "Breaking news: Star Wars is not real." Who said that? Steel. Oh yeah. Oh, he's I not. think I think the I think there was stuff going on in his life. Not in oh. his life. On Twitter, oh, because people are you know, oh right, right, right Star right, Wars right, right, people. Right. I yell see what you're saying. Yeah. And, you well, know. it's just, and people get very upset when you say it's just a movie or something too. It's you know what I, you know what I yeah I don't want to say it. You don't want to say it. It's just for the first time in my life with with Star Wars is because I always felt Star Wars was so much more yeah than just a movie. With the new movies, I feel like they treat them a little bit more just like movies. Yeah, you're talking about Disney. Disney or Lucas, Lucasfilm. Lucasfilm. Lucasfilm yeah. treats it more. It used to be more than just a movie. I feel like these days, to the the powers that be, they're just movies. They're good. They're movies that they love. Is that and Lucas? Movies, do you think? Because Lucas treated it. That was his vision. He put it in there. Yeah, but he, I, I still think there's a lot of people out there that that see it the other way too. I just yeah. think that you know, in, in in the grand scheme of things, it is a movie. It's but I just think that a movie. I think that it's just it's meant so much more to people than just a movie. So to me, it's more than just a movie. It's right. it's a mo- it's it's a movie it's a story it's the story that I yeah. gravitate to always yeah. the mythology all that I mean because it's really too right now you're on it let's just get right into it and go into rule of two do that rise thing that Fernandez does rise Perfect. I do it better all right welcome everybody it is rule of two episode sixteen on the official collider Jedi Council podcast one feed. We drop every Wednesday. We're in addition to Jedi Council, and I'm bringing Jedi Council to me. Right. Because Mark Fernandez is gone. He's on Sith business, as we call it. Yep. Uh, Sith business being, we don't know what he's doing. He does Who what knows he... what he's doing? But so He is the emperor. He, he is the emperor. He is Mark City. As you are Darth Harloff. Uh-huh. Welcome to the show, my friend. Yeah, it's good to be this here. This is the second in a row. Uh, you, was we, it last week? We took off last week oh, because right, of the right, holiday. Right. So but it is kind of second in a row. Second in a row. Well, yeah, and by Ken these and I standards. did. Oh, man, what a polarizing conversation that was had. Why was it polarizing? I didn't check. Well, we had. Uh, look, you know me. I like to. I, the, to me, this is uh, this is more what I like to do. More, I, I was more, looking forward to this. We more, just talk. It's just intimate. Yeah. And Ken and I had the same type of thing where we did a pre-tape for yeah. Thanksgiving. And I and I asked the the fans at the end of the episode, said, "What do you what do you think? Do you like this or the old school?" And I also posted that inside of the uh, Collider Jedi Council Facebook group, and it was mixed. It was like fifty fifty. Uh, I think I'm getting a lot of tweets of people loved it, and yeah. a lot of tweets of people want to go back to, to the regular, the regular kind of old school format that they've been come uh, you know accustomed to. The internet fears change sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it happens. And it's also different. I think, you know, to be fair to the people who really like it, they um, it's a very different feel. It's got a structured – it's not as conversational as much as it's like here's the news and it's kind of reporting. And, and some people like that. And they like the overall because there's sometimes three to four people on it and it mm-hmm. feels more like a council. So I thought the, the – the, not criticisms, but oh, some criticisms, but good ones, uh, yeah. were, were valid. And I thought there was some good conversation there had – I was very impressed with the way that people presented themselves yeah, and, and said there was, but um, I just, you know, for me, it's, I've been doing that show for a while and it's like, I, I like to talk to people. You like to talk to people? Hey, you wanted to change it up and it was a perfect opportunity to do that. We had to pre-tape a number of things before right. the holiday. Right. So, but you brought up something interesting that it happened in the cold open yeah. and, you know, we're coming in hot right now. The idea that, you know, some people take Star Wars so seriously, it's not just movies to them. Right. But now the new regime that you're calling – that Lucasfilm, they're treating it more like – I can certainly agree with that with Kathleen Kennedy. Yeah. She's, she's a, a producer. producer. Yeah. She's a movie producer. So, you know, The Last Jedi does $1.3 billion worldwide. That's a success yeah. for a movie producer. It's a product. So, That's the thing is that I, I think it – I see it. And 
rightfully so to her as a producer. Yeah. She's brought in to produce, and she's like, this is the product I need to sell. Mm-hmm. I've sold that product. I sold that product. I sold that product. And it's just to me, I always, I always thought of Star Wars more than that, whether yeah. it's right or wrong. Um, and I, and so that's that's why I was just like, for the first time, I was like, man, they, they kind of just feel like movies right now. And I want them to feel more. Yeah. I still like the. I mean, I love the Force Awakens. I really do. Yeah, I, I, I think you know Lucas went into it a little differently after New Hope. He he said, I, you know, he had all that mark, uh, yeah. merchandise money, so he's like, I can do it this way. I can bring in Irvin Kershner. Yeah. I can start THX. I can start merchandising. Merchandising. <laughs> you know, funny enough, uh, Kathleen Kennedy is on uh, Twitter now. Did oh, you see that? Really? Uh, no, that, that's no, not true. I was going to say yeah. Pablo Hidalgo just went. Come on, guys! Somebody followed him, and it's. The, and it says in the bio, the official Kathleen Kennedy Twitter account. And it's like President of Lucasfilm, Kathleen Kennedy, like three followers right now. Right. So she's out there. They, they, it's not her. No, 100% not her. She's, <laughs> she does, she does no business wanting to be on Twitter. She never want to be on Twitter. Sure, because, no. My God, the minute she goes and tweets. There are people waiting. Like, <laughs> yeah. They're like the Minox from Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. They will be on that thing, and people will look in and tweet, and it's like Princess Leia looking out the window, and, yeah. and then they're running. Yeah, no. Yeah, that's not going to uh, happen. No, she, you're never going to see her on Twitter. I, I don't think so. Now, uh, we walked into this kind of like, what, what the are hell are we going to talk yeah. about? Yeah. I always thought when you and I sit down, what is the thing that Star Wars that kind of puts us together in a big way that a lot of people don't? Really, that they can understand maybe, right. but we love the the scores. Oh yeah, you and I are scores and soundtracks guys. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we could talk about that. Yeah, I mean, I, it's, it's. I I think that it's. I'm very curious to see what episode nine is going to turn out to be. That's kind of where I was wanting to go. Nine. Yeah, I think. Yeah. New themes. Um, there's going to be things that I think old familiar themes that we haven't heard in a while. Yeah. Pop up. I think there's going to be. I think my favorite one is going to return. Ooh, yeah. You're banging that drum, man. I really am. I do think I, I just it just makes sense, doesn't it? It does it make just sense. It makes sense. I think it could be. I mean, we had Matt Smith rumored to be a young Palpatine. I don't buy that really. No, I, I, think, I, I, I think it's like you're. You said hologram, maybe. Maybe I don't know. Yeah. One way or another, because you think Ian McDermott. The reason why I really started to think about it mm-hmm. was Rebels. Yeah. Because he came back in Rebels to voice Palpatine. And it's like, you know, he's in contact again. He's been at every celebration. Um, you know, there's a way. He, we never really got the full explanation inside of the Plagueis thing of what he really learned. I mean, we did in Lucino's novel, but not in really in canon stuff. So, like, what? how could it tie into this new thing? Because everybody tied in one way or another, right? You know, yeah. like uh, Vader tied in one way or another. Even Obi-Wan ties in with in, inside of a... Uh, the, the the force vision, but there's been right. no mention of Palpatine. So, well, that's not true. They mentioned Darth Sidious. Well, yeah, Darth job. Sidious, Briefly, but... but that was in like in history. You know, mm-hmm. I, I just think that there's a way to do it. Like, yeah, how did Snoke come into this? And if you're gonna kill Snoke off that early, you don't have a big bad right now. It's certainly not Hux. It's not Hux, and it, well, it's Kylo. But he's, but he's conflicted. He's conflicted, and he's still. They're going to still do that silly thing where they're going to turn him back good again. And you know it's what? Like, yeah. Well, here's the, the, you know why there there seemed to be something in the Twitter universe that all of a sudden people started arguing about the redemption of Kylo Ren and not wanting to see it. Yeah. And um, I think that's what Steel was kind of you know. Is that where it started? Oh, is that where I think it came that's yeah. where it started because I was looking at just going on Twitter and I'm like, wow, is Star Wars. Peeps are kind of in a tizzy right now. Why? Couldn't really put my finger on it, which is hysterical. But Kylo Ren, redeemed, uh, redeemed by the end, dies at the end, g- gives his life to save some of the resistance. What do you? Where do you see his character? I, going? They, they, unfortunately, I think they're going to do the redeeming story. Okay. I think that he's been he's so far past it. I think we already teased it in the Last Jedi. Yeah. But we'll go back to it again, yeah. and he'll be redeemable, and he'll be a good guy, and he'll 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 probably save Ray. Or something. Yeah, that's um, where I'm going with that. Yeah, he'll probably save Ray, and whether or not he dies or not, I don't know. But he'll. It's they're they're setting they're setting you up for for another turn. I think he. I think he dies. I Possible. think he dies. Like Anakin yeah. style. Yeah. Yeah. I think he dies. I think it's fine. I mean, 
I'm trying to just not speculate that much, but um, well, that's let's what talk we about do. episode nine. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, that's how we speculate. That's what we do. Yes, I love speculation. Yeah. It's when you hold on to want something that doesn't right. come true and get mad, or you get something right, and then but the fans will get mad at you and tell you what you got wrong, even if you yeah. get something right. Yeah, we call it gotcha oh, yeah. here because I did my Ahsoka thing right. You know, you are. I always say, if you want to know all the canon, right. that's where you go to council. You know, you you guys watch the Rebels episodes. You're watching you Resistance. You need to watch Rebels, though. There's no excuse. I, I need watched to watch. it. I just forgot. You got to watch the whole thing. I got all the Blu-rays. You got to watch them. No, I'm, I want to watch them. No, I watched everything finally. Oh, you've I seen forgot. it all and you forgot? Yeah. You forget, you forgot what happened with Ahsoka and, and yeah. Ezra at the end? Yeah, you know why? Because I was kind of watching it in the background, and I feel bad for saying that. You should. You but I want to revisit it because that um, I'm finally got the resistance on my DVR, right. so I'm going to go I'm not go caught back. up on that, so I'll tell you that. Okay. I'm, I'm still two episodes in. And do you like it so far? The two episodes I've watched, I like that. I haven't okay. watched it since the premiere. I have, I'm have i all backed up on my DVR, I'm, and I'm probably just going to do one big binge and yeah. just get the whole season over with. I can't wait for like the, the holiday break. I'm yeah. going to catch up on a lot of this stuff. Okay, but, but yeah. episode nine, mm-hmm. um, what is it in your mind that you need to ha- not necessarily happen, like speculation, sure. Yeah. But like, what are some of the hallmarks? You talk about Star Wars. You talk about like how it's more than a movie. What does that do for you in Episode Nine? So, what is that feeling like that you need in Episode Nine? Well, I always, I mean, like I said, I I, I push back against anyone who said, I mean, because Fernandez and I and talked about this in the last one. I I fundamentally disagree with him when he says that Last Jedi didn't have to do with the Force. It has everything to do with the force. Yeah, it's it's yeah. it's a it's the whole movie the, is the about crux the force. Of, of, the, of the movie. Um, but the uh, the thing that he and I are both on the same page is there's not one actual lightsaber fight yeah. in, in that movie. Right, that needs to come back. Um, I think we'll get that. Yeah, I think we'll get that, and then some. I think we're gonna have a lot a lot of lightsaber fights. I think that you'll make it more about the actual force users. There'll be more about the people using the force than just. Ray, yeah, and um, and Kylo Ren, right, and that's what people want to see. I, w- I also need a two hour and a half movie. You want to, a two hour, yeah, half close hours? it out because I, I think that because Ken and I were speculating on this. I think on the last episode, I would guess because Iger because when they made the deal, a Lucasfilm, yeah, and Disney said we're getting one movie a year, right? Mm-hmm. But that was before Disney Plus. Right. Came along, mm-hmm. um, and there was the the goal is to be able to make sure that Star Wars is in the the stratosphere. Mm-hmm. It's going to be in the stratosphere, some matter no matter what. And now that they have all these shows mm-hmm. coming in, I wouldn't be surprised if we get a break, right? So, and and if it's one two years, everybody's be. watching the Mandalorian and maybe the Cassian, Cassian Anders, yeah, because they're going to close out episode nine, mm-hmm. and then what happens next? You know, it's like we know that Benioff and Weiss is w- are working on something. We don't know what it is. Yeah, but they got yeah. They, they they're going to start work on that after Game of Thrones wraps, which right. is July. No, a- it's April. April. Well, April's when April's when the first episode airs. Right, but they're so still not actually, done. Right, so when it actually wraps, um, it probably won't be wrapped until like, what June. Yeah. So then that's End when they start June, working maybe? on it. So I mean, you know, I I thought about it. It's like they probably we probably won't hear anything about that series for a while. Because they got to go but in that's... and start writing. I'm sure maybe they have, like, they're sitting around the water cooler on break and go, you know what we should do for that? Yes, maybe yes. they'll talk. But Structured, they got to write it's it. Structured out. They got to structure it out. They got to write it. They're going to start casting it. They would announce it. They would right. do whatever it is. So we're just looking at at least two years. That's what I'm thinking. And I'm thinking that you're going to have, and I think people are going to be okay with it because mm-hmm. a lot of, and I think it actually would be healthy for Star Wars because, once again, the Mandalorian hits the way we hope it does. Yeah. You might get. Mandalorian hits next se- next year, right? Mm-hmm. Then cast in Andor, and then Mandalorian season two. If you don't get it directly year after year, then then you do that every other year, right. and then the next Star Wars movies in like you know two or three years from now. And I think people will be okay with it because it's not a complete gap in Star Wars. No, because it's still out there. People are going to be talking about yeah. it. Just your reference, the Mandalorian series and, and the Cassian and Anders. People are going to talk about yeah. it. I think it helps when you take a little bit of a break. Uh, yes and no. Yeah. I think that it just depends on, like, for example, I think that if they shot whatever this new series is, with, mm-hmm. and they shot it back to back to back, mm-hmm. and they came out every year, like Lord of the Rings, I think you could have done it. I think that they, I think that their strategy initially was poor. Yeah. I just, I mean, Rogue One worked out because the reshoots and stuff worked out. I don't necessarily know if that had to be the first spinoff. It was fine that it was. Solo was a, was a mistake even from when it was launched 
to the movie itself. I think that it, whether you would have done Obi-Wan or something completely different, I believe you still would have. If Solo didn't fail, you'd still be having one movie a year. Yes, I agree with that. What do you think is the failure? We're going to jump around a little bit. Because, that movie? Yeah. Marketing, we've heard about. Yes. Not really needing a Han Solo movie. Yes. We kind of know. Coming right after Last Jedi. All of this. All things. of this. Right? Of yeah. It. That's what I think. And I and that's where I wonder, maybe that's why that Obi-Wan movie kind of... They got scared. There's all these rumors. Yeah. And they, and got, they scared. got scared. And they went, no, we can't do it. Cause, but a lot of people want... Why do they want an Obi-Wan movie and not a Solo movie? Um, I think there's a lot of different reasons for that because the f the first is the is the obvious here is that Han, Han Solo was Harrison Ford, right? Yeah, that's you, huge. You and McGregor made it made us believe that he was young Obi Wan in the prequels. So yeah. he and Alec Guinness share Obi Wan. Right. Alden Ehrenreich never shared Han Solo, so yeah. you had to accept that's him right. right away. So we were great point. We were going to see you and McGregor. Continue where he left off. Mm -hmm. So, oh, okay, that's just a continuation of the guy we already saw. So you're ready. That's so right, right there. It has everything working for it. Yeah. So, I wonder though. Like, here's what's interesting. When you hear Rogue One coming, it was kind of like a story that you could maybe talk about. How do they get the Death Star plans? Yeah. Right. That's something that I think fans that's cool. can go. Yeah. That's cool. I kind of want to see that. Han Solo. It's like I kind of want to know him doing the Kessel Run. Did I mean? I yeah, don't know. But the Kessel Run to me was very disappointing. I thought the Kessel Run was going to be like a everything a race. about Solo was disappointing for me, yeah, I, and I know for you as well. Yeah, we, I, we, I, I thought it was. I thought it was. A, someone said this the other day, and I, I thought I agree with them. It seemed like a, a really good episode of like Rebels or something. Yeah, it's like yeah. it's it was. It just it wasn't a bad movie. It just no, wasn't. It just didn't. No. It didn't blow me away. And I think a lot of people felt that way. People say that's good, and even the people who were, I really liked it. Yeah, but it's not, it's not like one of those really memorable movies, and it was just one of those things that. Again, like you said, six months after Last Jedi, yeah, mistake. The marketing around Avengers was everything. That and was Solo everything. was nothing. Mm -hmm. And Bob Iger even said, you know, I should we should have pushed that. I think that if you if it's coming out in a month from now, right now, it does a hundred times better than it did. Yeah, and I, people, I think there'd be so more too. excitement around it because. Yeah. It's, but, but you know, that's that's been we've been covered that we've covered that to death. Um, I just think that it wasn't a movie that people necessarily needed. At all, it was that it was people, and that rumor of Solo and Boba Fett when we were doing Far Far Away back in oh like two thousand and uh, like thirteen. Yeah, they we were they were the slate that they were talking about was Han Solo, Boba Fett, Yoda, Yoda, and Obi Wan, Obi Wan, mm -hmm. and it's Jabba like, the Hutt. That was a rumor. And that was that's still a rumor. Yeah, um, the gangster movie. You know. Yeah, I would love a gangster movie. I mean, but see, I, my point is, what are the stories that? Because everybody automatically says, "No, don't put another." I've heard it with Obi Wan. Don't do Obi Wan. Don't do all this reliance on these old characters, nostalgic right. characters. What are the stories that people want then? Well, I, I think it's it's a matter of what can be. I don't. Know, we said this last week on on this show or two weeks ago. That you you think you know everything about Obi Wan because you saw a couple movies. You don't know everything about Obi Wan. No, we didn't know everything about Han Solo. We learned a lot about Han Solo. Yes. It just it was just a matter of inside of that with that particular and and Alden Ehrenreich was was fine. Yeah, it, it's just I don't know if he just he just didn't portray Solo. I think the same way that he didn't have that kind of it was it, when when Han Solo walked into the room when he was Harrison Ford because he was Harrison Ford. He went, "There's Han Solo." Right. And I don't want to hear this thing about like, well, he hadn't gotten there yet. You have that when you're younger. It's like when you, you that's who the guy is. He's Han Solo. That's my, the perfect example of that is, I'm sorry, Ewan McGregor doing right. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yeah, right. Because there was something about Alec Guinness, this wise nature, and it's like, well, he, not young Obi-Wan, but he had something that you can't take your eyes off him. Yeah, that's you a great felt point. It. He, that, it's a great point because even when he's the young Padawan in Episode One, mm -hmm. when he's talking to Jar Jar Binks and he's like something elusive, yeah, it's like you still believe that it's Obi Wan. Yeah, he's, he's young. He's he, like he's super young and he's a Padawan. But I'm like, that's Obi Wan. Like, do you know how many times are we, the, the, that in the first Phantom Menace is like they're all against it? Why can't you? And he's talking yeah, to, yeah, to yeah, Qui Gon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I rewound that a hundred times, going, that, "See, that's like that's Obi Wan. That's Obi Wan." And that's yeah. and that's kind of that that's the thing. And again, it's something. That, and it's we know about all the problems that went in there, but I just think that was the, the problem they were working with on that movie. That if you would have led with something else from a different part of the galaxy, right? Something completely different. And I still think they're going to go there. I, I'm 
convinced they're going to do that with Benioff and Weiss. And they're gonna, yeah. Because I think that that is a safe bet for them to go back in time. Because there's no, you don't have to worry about who's playing a Skywalker or right. who's doing this or who's playing a solo or how Jabba fits in. It's a completely different playground that you can create. And then again, like I said, if they happen to do the stuff with the Jedi and the Sith, how were how they first? How did it all start? I it's, that's the story I want to see. Right. Like, what is it? I don't I don't know if they'll go that far back, but somebody going like, huh? And then pulling something like, what's the first Force user? Right. What is the second? Well, how do they form up? But the that, School of the Jedi. The start. It's the teachings of it. The yeah. teachings of the Sith. How they split up. How people went rogue. You could. That's why when they say series of films, mm-hmm. if it's successful and they do indeed go that route. You can spin off into who's your lead character? Who's your lead Jedi? Who's your lead Sith? There's so much that you can do now to get all all those fans who want the lightsabers and the Force again. That's how you do it, and right. you can and you can do it. I don't know, 500 years before, and still call it the Old Republic if yeah. you wanted to. It's fine. I love that idea of the story, but it, it this this idea of like what are the stories that people want to hear? I think a good. I'm wondering about the brand Star Wars versus holding on to like nostalgic characters that people recognize. So you can put a Yoda on a poster and everybody goes, oh, yeah, I want to see that. Right. But like when you put just Star Wars by Benioff and Weiss and you have like a lightsaber, like an old lightsaber, is that enough for everybody to go in? See, and I what you're asking is mm-hmm. I believe what the people of Lucasfilm are asking. Are asking, right. right. Yeah. I'm I, playing devil's advocate right now. It is. And it, and and in the business sense it's fair to ask, but yep. you've got to trust in what the lore that you have. And you've mm-hmm. got to trust in the fact that people like this stuff because of reason if you give them the right warrior, if you give them the right uh hero or yes. right or the right villain to follow, as long as it's set in that in that structure, people will come. Yes, and, and and it'll be and again, depending on who you cast, on who the director is, mm-hmm. and because of the Star Wars IP, they will be there. But yeah. you've got to, it, it. It doesn't. You don't have to have Yoda in there. You don't have to have Obi Wan. You don't have to have Han Solo for people that that because no one knew who Han Solo and Luke Skywalker were in 1977. No, and they responded to the galaxy. They responded to the adventure, and I think that that's why. Every executive, every stu- you know, a lot of studio people get caught in the familiar because this works and we need to make money. And they don't want to make that risk because if they make that risk and it fails, then they look wrong. Yeah. But a lot of people want to take that risk but don't really want to because if they succeed, then they are looked at as the unsung hero. Yeah, it's it's crazy to think that just in 1977 – I mean, a lot of people sat there, and when the opening crawl happens, that got him. Then the spaceship right. going over the head, that got him. And then a lightsaber, and then it's the story that kept him coming yeah. back over and over again. So you're right. I think you could do – look at what Marvel did with Guardians of the Galaxy. I always use that example because they threw out Guardians of the Galaxy, and we all here yeah. went, huh? What's, Who are these guys? Right. It was huge. Because right. it was a good story. And it had the Marvel Fun. IP on it. Yep, Marvel IP. Yeah. That's it. A poster that says Star Wars, the logo, yeah. just up here with a with an old lightsaber coming out of the dirt. That's what but that's that's what it has going for it as opposed to the, even something like Guardians. If it is indeed, if they were able I mean, maybe they won't. Maybe it's maybe it's set in the future. But if it was set in the past, and mm-hmm. just because of Benioff and Weiss and what they've done, you just would assume that they would go that far back, right? Yeah. And if they did very similar to what you're talking about with Rogue One. Of mm-hmm. Don't you want to see how the they stole the Death Star plans? Don't you want to see how the Jedi were created? Don't you want to see how the Sith went rogue? Yeah. Yes, please. There's, sign me up. There's these questions that come out of these kind of concepts. Like the quest, the main question is the Death Star plans. For this, don't you want to see how the Jedi right. formed? Yes. Don't you want to see where Yoda came from? No. That's me, though. Right. But I could see a bridge there with that character. And that's that's the right nine hundred years. Yeah, that's that's the point. Is if the first question is, don't you want to see how the Jedi formed or the, how the Sith began? And inside of that, you might see Jedi, Yoda as a Jedi training as an apprentice. All right, that's fine. I don't necessarily need that, but that would be cool. That could be a cool Easter egg. Exactly. Right. As Yoda to walks a, by. As opposed to a full movie. On yeah. His, on, on his adventures. We don't need that because that's what I was hoping. Maybe you reference Boba Fett. Like I was hoping Boba Fett showed up in Han Solo, and we don't need a Boba Fett right. movie. Right. But now we have no Boba Fett movie. I can't believe that that movie might have happened. That they that they went through not only one director but two directors and then killed it. Are you glad about that? 
The, which which one? Boba Fett, because um, we had Mangold yeah, yeah, that yeah. was reported that was going to do it, and no. before that it was Trank. No, I think that Mandalorian is going to serve the, the role of what Bo- Boba Fett was going to do. Do you think there's any story kind of elements from a Boba Fett movie? That could play in the Mandalorian? Yeah. Absolutely. So, But the character, Boba Fett, a lot of people go at it. He's not from Mandalorian. He just... Yeah. Picked up the the, the mantle, right. so to speak. Right. Um, do I think that uh, he'll be a Mandalorian? I think he probably will be because I think that Dave Filoni will want to bring in the culture of the Mandalorians because mm-hmm. he loves Mandalore. Yeah. Um, and I think that Favreau's played in that sandbox as well. Mm-hmm. So I think that they will do that. I think you're going to see tie-ins to the Rebels lore because it's not – it's – that this takes place after Jedi, mm-hmm. um, and that's not too far after when uh, Rebels ends. So it's right around the same time when Rebels right. ends. Yeah. Um, and I think that they'll they'll be some kind of tie-ins. To, that's that's the beauty of Filoni working on it because Filoni's yeah. been really involved in any the the television that we've had in Star Wars has been Clone Wars, mm-hmm. and it's been Rebels. Uh, and it's been Rebels. Rest, Resistance. Right? That's what it's been so far. Now that we've got a live action, then why wouldn't you have? Carry that over into lore and kind of say, look, look, I, we did this in the past, Favreau. So what do you think if we if we tied this into that storyline? What's uh, Favreau going to say? This. No, why would, why would he say no to that? That that series in particular gets me the most excited because Mandalorian of, over Cassian. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, me too. Uh, because I I when we get Force Awakens announced and we're forty years later, I'm like sweet and thirty, right? Th- or 30? thirty or four, four, I don't know. I mean, forty right. in age, but you oh know. yes, yes. yes. But the idea was, oh, my God, we we're going to see what happened after the Empire. Right. We didn't really get that. That's what I want to see. Right. I know we've had we, some canon stuff yes. that has worked. I loved Battlefield 2. I don't care. People, that me story too. to me was so much yeah, fun to cool. play. See Luke Skywalker go look for some stuff. See Han the Solo different with character. The beard, Han Solo yeah. with the beard. You know, all these different things. But I really wanted to know, what was it like rebuilding the Republic? What are these factions all over the galaxy yeah. that now can maybe, you know, it's like, when you see a riot happening, right? There's no government, so everybody's starting to grab right, stuff. Right. What is that? So I feel like the Mandalorians are going to step up. Well, that's that's a great point because when you read all these books mm. and these comics and everything, you you forget because sometimes it blends in. You think everybody knows what the hell was going on during that time. Like if you read Bloodline yeah. or or any of that stuff, which I love Bloodline. I love the government right. parts of that. And a lot of people. And Star Wars heads have read it, but a lot of the casual fans and maybe a lot of people listening to the show right. have not. And they don't understand, like, so what the hell did happen? If you mm-hmm. didn't read Chuck Wendig's books, right? Mm-hmm. Like, all three of those, that sets it up. Uh, there's, there's mention of, like you said, Battlefield 2 and all, all these things that kind of have pieced in. I know a lot of what happened with the Battle of Jakku and, and uh, the formation and how the New Republic took control, but then they started battling within themselves again and the yeah. politics just started all over again. I think that they'll start to play with that. At least I hope they do. I don't want them to retcon any of that stuff because I thought yeah. that stuff's pretty been fascinating. That's the risk that you get as you started to dive deeper into storytelling inside a film. But if you take from that and you build that and you play off of it, then you could do some really special stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't think we're going to see a lot of the casual, or excuse me, a lot of the original characters. I don't think they're going to recast Leia. I don't think they'll recast Luke or recast anybody. You'll hear of them. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I think because it's too hard. And to your point earlier about Alden and Harrison, it's like I brought up the what if scenario of like uh, Sebastian Stan showing up as a young Luke Skywalker in that I'm blind when it comes to my love for that character, for Luke Skywalker. So I'm like, why not? Could they do that? I don't know. But to your point, I don't think they're going to do that, at least for a while. Yeah. I could, I'm wondering though if, if it gets really, really popular, will they ever risk a young Leia, a young Luke Skywalker? Bring in Alden Ehrenreich for Mandalorian somehow. The story serves, maybe. Yeah. Depending on how far they got, because let's say it's the most popular thing that they do on the on it Plus. Hits. It and, just and is it great. Just the numbers are incredible, mm-hmm. and they're they're just doing, and it becomes season five is around the corner. Yeah, and and eventually, depending. Oh, not eventually, because it's thirty years to play with. But you you know you get closer and closer to Force Awakens, yeah. and what's going to happen? Like you got to play. You've got to play into depending on. Maybe not. I don't know. Who knows where the Mandalorian goes? But I just think that you're going to want to tie in a little bit nostalgia. Yeah. And I don't mean necessarily showing the characters, but talking about them, the understanding of what's happening inside of the government. Because the New Republic is going to be the focus of – because that's that's who's in charge. At, right. At the New time, Republic. Yeah. At the time of the Mandalorian, the New Republic, they're in charge for like 30 years. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they don't get overthrown by the First Order until Force Awakens. Right. So – 
all of that and how does this Mandalorian like how how is everyone operating? Because when when we know the Star Wars that we know in live action before the new trilogy, right? Mm-hmm. Inside of well, in the prequels, we saw that the way that people ran was underneath the. Rep- Old, old Republic as it is as it was, with uh, the Jedi as the consulates and and, and all these people just kind of um, running as the Emperor and everybody else in the Galactic Senate mm-hmm. was running the entire shop. Sure. Then in the original trilogy, it was what was happening as far as the Emperor go, the Empire goes, and right? You and the rebellion that's happening underneath the rule right. underneath the Nazis, if you will. Sure. Right? And you saw that in Rogue One. You saw it in Rebels, and we really haven't had a lot of material at all mm. as far as what was it like underneath the new republic i know that's really fascinating yeah. to me i mean aside from bloodlines which i know not your casual fans so that's what i'm wondering you could have a like you know uh chancellor Whoever. organa right said that she's they are not, putting she, in you know she's law not a chancellor yet no i know does she ever become a chancellor um she runs for she runs for the i think um i forget what, what it is in, in bloodline no, she that's runs right for the, 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 but that's six years before force awakens right this is this is right after jedi so she's still kind of built she's the senator i believe she's, she's building, senator yeah building yeah. up i don't know when when she becomes the senator as far as or, or when she becomes if she goes f- or you could say, basically, Chancellor Mon Mothma just put right. a, a a decree across the galaxy, mm-hmm. and it travels all the way to the you know Mandalore, and people are like, well, we have right. to do this differently, and it shapes the plot. Well, she does, m- m- that you bring that. Mon Mothma says, and I believe it's right after Jedi, of of the people putting down their weapons, and like having, and, and New Republic kind of disarming a bit. Mm. And it just, it, it, she does, she puts a, a big mandate down, and I wonder, Mon Mothma, you could bring back. Yeah. And you could bring her back from the same actress from Rogue One. From Rogue One, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't see, yeah, that character could be interesting to come back. Some of these pocket characters that we've heard about. Akbar. Akbar could come back. Akbar would be great. I I wanted to (laughs) hunt. I can't believe you're going over to the Mandalore. (laughs) (laughs) And Last Jedi. (laughs) You wanted to hunt. (laughs) (laughs) And then he's dead. Oh, such a waste. Oh, Such poor guy. Waste. Do you see that Jason Fry, the, the writer of yeah, yeah. The Last Queen's Jedi, yeah. he is going and doing a thread about the book, the, the novelization, and giving you little facts. Oh, cool. And he, my favorite was because that opening of The Last Jedi book got all of us. I remember you giving it to me and going, read that. Yeah. And I just went, what? Yeah. And he kind of defends the choice to do that going, it's, it wasn't a little grab. It wasn't to try to sell it, although it helped. It served the story. I wanted to make the force almost like a character yeah. and the force was warning Luke Skywalker hey if you sit on your laurels like this this is what could happen right. so but I that's that just opening. an aside it's that really that good. aside was was really good yeah, Jason Fry is a good uh, he's a really good author man good star wars he underrated is. Uh, underrated star wars author he yeah. doesn't get enough credit he doesn't get enough credit and he's i love it when people like this that are doing some of this kind of stuff they go into twitter and they share some information yeah. so you get this like nice little look inside everything which brings me to another point. He talked a lot about Ray. I got tweeted over the weekend. I want to get your take on this since I have Darth Harloff and you're good at canon. You're the speculation off the charts mm-hmm. um, that the idea that the, uh, they're watching The Force Awakens again. This is uh, Tatooine Sons, a Star Wars podcast. I don't know if you're familiar. I'm not. Uh, that the Force ability that Quentin Voss has is what Ray has. Quinlan. That's Quint- I mean, oh, yeah, it says Quint- Quentin here, Quinton Voss, but Quinlan, Quinlan. Voss. Yeah. Um, that she's able to relive, relive the events of an item she touches. Now, we're calling it Force Backs or Flashbacks. Isn't that the same thing? Wait, say it. Hold on. We're, we're, we're watching The Force Awakens. Um, Sam yeah. realized that Ray's Force vision is simply psycho- uh, psych- psychometry, psychometry. Okay. The same Force ability that Quinlan right. Boss has. She is able to relive the events of the item she touches. Right, right, right. So it goes into so – did you see the leaked image of uh, Luke Skywalker? Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw yeah, the, making Star, Star Wars. Wars posted it, they yeah. t- 2015, they had this idea. Yeah, they said that – well, they, it wasn't an idea. Uh, I mean uh, the scoop. Yeah, yeah, that, that there was – they took – there was the shot footage of Luke from Empire. Yep. And they were going to use it. And that was the – this is the kid that I guess that was supposed to play him. And they just, right. they just cut it out. Um, that vision – it really – I'm worried about it, that whole vision, even though it happened already. Uh, yeah, because of episode, Force Awakens. That was episode it's a, nine. Because it's like, w- did it mean anything? I don't know. You I don't feel know? like, this is what I feel like, they're just not going to address yeah, it. I don't think they're going to address yeah, it Yeah, and that kind of sucks because I liked it. Yeah. I like the idea, of, though, taking that psychometry or whatever you pronounce that freaking word, 
That aside, if it's just vision she's seen from touching this thing, I call them still flashbacks. Yeah. Then there was flashbacks in The Last Jedi. Flashbacks in Episode Nine. Could we do it? Could we see it? Could we see Luke in action again? That was one of my theories. You know, we see something with Ben and Luke Skywalker. I hope so. I just yeah. I think that, I mean I think they've made it kind of clear now that they're going to focus on the new characters. And as much as I think I want to see Luke in it as much, I have to start to kind of reality of he's probably going to be in it like that much. <sighs> it's yeah. breaking my heart, but I, I, I can't disagree with that. Yeah. You don't think JJ could really look at this? I mean, this this stuff we were we were talking about on Collider Live. We got into a somebody got in a shouting match, and we just were tagged on Twitter over the Last Jedi, right. based off an Obi Wan movie. Right, like there was a report from Obi Wan, and then they start arguing over the Last Jedi. This thing is still going. <laughs> right, right. It's a year. It is a year, and well, people are still gonna, yelling. Yeah, this. Well, this is going. Episode nine is going to. It's it's going to be Yankees versus Red Sox. That's all it's going to yeah. be. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it's going to be. It's, yeah. it's people who, if they, if people who hated the Last Jedi like Episode Nine a little bit, they're going to love it. Yeah, and and it's going to be it's going to turn. And then if people who love the Last Jedi mm -hmm. and there's any retconning or I don't think retconning is the right word, but I think there's going to be stuff in this that kind of says, yeah, don't really pay attention to what was said in Episode Eight. It still kind of counts, but not really. Well, how could they ret like what? I the only thing I can think of is Luke and his ra race parentage. Race parentage. That, That's, yeah. Because they can move around that and say, you he know. He was lying. Yeah, it's something along the lines of, of I was lying, I, 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 th I thought about it, you know, it's been it's been long time, maybe maybe there are other things here that I didn't necessarily read the right way, and mm -hmm. there's, there's, there's ways to maneuver around it, right? Yeah. Um, and I think that stuff will happen. I think some people, depending on how it's done, may love it. Some people may hate it. Um, it also depends on how nostalgia will work into it and how it plays. And yeah, both of those guys, Star Wars, were very different from one another. They're yeah. very different Star Wars. They both saw Star Wars very differently. Whether mm -hmm. you love, you can love both of them, but you can't which argue. I do, that, which I'm glad. Right. And you Thank can't God. argue that they are very different Star Wars movies. They are. Yeah, they, yeah they, and that's what I love so much about it. I love so much The Last Jedi. I just watched it again with uh, on my Patreon page yeah. uh, with a bunch of fans. We just analyzed the hell out of it. I had a blast. Then, out of my own accord, went and watched Force Awakens over Thanksgiving, and I just love how they complement each other. But that's just me. Yeah. That's me. Yeah. I have fun very, with that stuff. It's a very different conversation. It's a very time. different conversation, yeah. but for we're staying with Episode Nine. Okay, so Luke, smaller part? I'm, I'm, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I think it's gonna maybe be in the size of Yoda in Episode Eight. Uh, maybe a little bigger than that. Yeah. Well, but that's yeah. maybe a little bigger. That might be fine. Again, I want Luke haunting Ben Solo. I would love that. I don't think that's gonna happen. You don't nah. see around, kid. I know. I, I tell you, that's that's kind of the stuff. I don't think that it, he, there's gonna be a, a, an attention paid to. I think JJ's gonna make JJ's gonna make a sequel to Episode Seven. He's not gonna make a sequel to Episode Eight. Mm. I, I just don't. I just don't think he will. Um, but he's the one that put him out there on that island. I always say that. But who, yeah, and again, we'll, and, but, you we, know, will, and, we will never know the answers to any of these questions. We will yeah. never know the answer to, unless you are fr unless you are Greg Grunberg, right? Uh, you will never know the answer to these questions uh, because you know. And I love that sometimes when people say like, "Well, you know, JJ came out and said that if he read this script, he would have earlier." He would have done this himself. <laughs> I love it when you go there's, to your voice. There's, there's also things that be like, I want to direct again. Yeah. I want to be political. Yeah. I also, I'm going to say certain things because I know how to because I'm in this business. Yeah. Um, but look, maybe maybe it turns out like episode nine comes out and you go, whoa, these complemented each other very well. And it just, it man, Ryan Johnson could have been directing that one. Right? Some people are like, no. Yeah. Other people are like, that's amazing. We won't know. We have about – it's only a year away. I know. Which is crazy. Um, and I am starting to really, really look forward to Star Wars Celebration. Yeah, me too. I'm really looking forward to that as well. I think – okay, so we're going to end it here with some last speculation. Sure. Uh, when are we going to get the title? Yeah, there's your thing. There it is. It's the, there it it's is. the LaCroix. It's the LaCroix. Um, title? When, when are we getting the title? Before Celebration? Hmm. Um. It just depends if if they might wait, which I think would be risky, and they've done this before. They might wait until April to give us the first trailer. Was 
The first Celebrations last, is March? April. April, right. Was last Jedi, I think the first trailer is at Celebrations. And that's when, I mean, I think we got the, did we get the title like a couple weeks before? We get it before. We've we gotten did. it before. So I wouldn't be surprised that it happened like March, if that happens again. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, this movie's not going to need a huge marketing push. I think people are going to be uh, excited to have it close out and see how it closes out. The final yeah. episode of the Skywalker saga. And I think once April hits, I think that you can give the title in March, give the title in April, and then really fire through. But I, my, my whole idea of what I think we're getting at Celebration has kind of changed drastically. Yeah, I think because of Solo... You know, kind of cleaning the slate. Like, yeah. we're not doing this. Here's Mandalorian stuff. Here's Cassie Nander. Information. The information. Yeah. We're going to get maybe the announcement of another streaming. Maybe. I don't know. Probably not. Yeah, probably. The, yeah, you're right. I take that back because we're going to focus on these two. Going to get, get a Clone lot of Wars, episode nine. Clone Wars stuff. A lot of episode definitely nine stuff. getting. Episode nine trailer, Clone Wars stuff for sure. They, they, they could have a TV panel. Yeah. And the TV panel could be Clone Wars. It could be, or, you know, yeah, Clone Wars, Mandalorian. Cassian Andor, right? That's that's right there. That's three projects that you could talk about. Got then a you, lot there. Yeah. Then you have uh, Episode Nine. Mm-hmm. I think that's where it stops. I was I was kind of beating the drum for a little bit that I thought that Benioff and Weiss were going to be there doing their thing, but now that Game of Thrones debuts in April, and I thought that you know I was, I, they're still shooting and editing, and and they need all the stuff to finish out by like June or whatever it is. That I think they're going to be too wrapped up in Game of Thrones, and I don't think they're going to. I don't think they're going to announce it. I mean, I think you're nine, ninety percent correct. I have this outside chance, and I don't bet against Christian. Harloff, I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong on this. I one. would love to see it if they actually show up and announce their project. Yeah, I was, and go. I, this I is what changed, we're doing. I just changed my tune on it for a long time. I yeah. thought it was, and then after they announced Game of Thrones that is coming in April for sure. Yeah. I at first I was like, oh yeah, that means we're going to get it, and I was like, well, no, because they're going to be editing. More post for than all the follow up and all the hype because of the last season, right? It, they're they're not going to be wanting to have their head wrapped around in Star Wars right now. They're going to be doing Game of Thrones press. It, it's not going to be for a bit. But just a plane ride over, we're coming out on stage with Kathleen Kennedy. Yeah. All right, everybody. Hi, I'm you know Benny. Hey, I'm Weiss. Yeah. Okay. So very excited to announce. You know, it's going to be Jedi versus Sith. You know, coming, blah, 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 and they target it, and, and they're like, all right, everybody, see ya. Yeah, you. I know, could see that happening. Yeah, you know why? I, the reason why I don't think it could? Mm. For exactly what you said, they've got bit in the ass too many times now with announcing something and then it either falling apart, <sighs> yeah. and then it's like, because we don't know when it's coming out, mm-hmm. if they stick to, they're not com- it's not coming out in 2020 at this point. They would no. announce something. So no. let's say it's 2021 or even 2022, yeah. right? It's like, why announce it now? Before you have it, write the script, have it done, have it locked, and then announce it because I love it's that. because it's not like you don't have something else that you're filling in the, in the interim. Yeah, you've got this TV series that everyone's going to be hyped about. Yeah, you have another TV series. You got Clone Wars. You have things people are hyped about. You've bought your you've bought yourself some breathing room. You really have. I mean, I think that's a great point because they kind of need it. I mean, everybody's excited for Episode Nine. That's built in. We've been excited for Episode Nine since they announced this these new trilogy was going right. to come out. The trilogy movies are what we're excited about. So I tend to agree with that. I think you're probably right. All right, Mr. F- uh, I almost called you Fernandez. That's yeah, uh, hysterical. Uh, Mr. Harloff, thank you very much for filling in for uh, Dar- or Mark Sidious. Go Dolphins. Oh, wait, Go sorry. T- <laughs> Dolphins deep dive yeah. coming at you. Uh, where could the people find you, of course? Uh, you know where. You know where. That's right. I knew I set you up for that. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> and I love it. That's why I want to do it. And it's episode 16. That'll do it. Uh, I am at Riley Run on Twitter and Instagram. You can find me there. Send us some questions. Hashtag rule of two. Fernandez will be back next week. We will get on it again, I promise, and we'll be back next week, of course. But that'll do it. Episode 16 in the book. Subscribe, rate, and share this episode with everyone. This is on the official Collider Podcast One Jedi Council feed. See you next week.